<laughs> there we go. We're live. We're live. Hey everybody, welcome to Turn Based Talk. I'm very sorry for having a bit of we had a bit of technical d difficulties and basically the stream is now moving over to this one instead. So I'm very sorry for anyone having these technical difficulties, but um Anyways, you can always like listen to this afterwards, and um, I think we should be good. So yeah, this is our first time going live, isn't it? Uh, it's you know you're you're kind of nervous, right? Well, I'm not bit. saying nervous. It's just uh, it's my first time being. Well, not saying my first time. I've done live stuff before, but it's been a while since I've done something live. Right. Yeah, that's true. Oh, you have you have done live stuff before? Uh, well, it's not basically live. Well, it was live. But it's just a few of our people. It's just this thing called Blood TV, which is similar to Ustream, which is now currently the well-known and Twitch TV and whatnot. But I've done some live stuff before, but let alone this sort of way, like a podcast sort of thing. Right. Yeah. I me yeah. I remember that back in the day. That was. <laughs> that was back in the day. But anyways, man, we have a lot of topics to discuss today, and like we had, we had the record game that. It's going to come out today for our Euro American uh, viewers, which is actually going to come out on Friday over here in Europe, which is going to be a painful wait. But at least mm. we did get a demo of Forza Horizon 3, which is, you know, it, it's it's at least uh, it's nice to at least get a demo or something. And this was a phenomenal demo, like absolutely. Like to me, I have I've had a pretty long like hiatus from racing games just in general, and to me like. Oh my god, this is something that I think I'm gonna really get into. Um, like, I've been playing a lot of, like, I remember playing Burnout's Paradise, and I remember playing, like, Midtown Madness way back in the day. But this is, like, honestly, like, the most open-ended type of racing game I've ever played, because, like, uh, I was trying out Forza Horizon, the first one, where it's, like, it's, it's kind of, um, what can I say, there's a lot of fences, you can't really go anywhere in this game. I was, like, I was setting up a waypoint, on the map and then I figured you know what I don't have to drive on the road I can just like go straight through the jungle and I was like ramming straight through and that is something I just haven't really seen before in a in an open world racer indeed and even though that um, I love the Forza Horizon series more than the motorsport series because of the whole um, open world aspects even though there were some limitations on the first game but during the second and third game and um, they have really opened up their world in the Horizon series and their Forza games yeah it's I mean like the it, it really pushes everything to the next the next limit i mean the the way the weather shows up like you see you see right here the oh my god uh, they brought in like everything from like the the forza series and they put it everything like baked it nicely into this open world slightly arcade slightly um realistic racing experience now you're gonna have to help me out a little bit on this one because i i haven't played the second one i've been playing a lot of the first one because i got it for free with um with gold, but I'm like Forza is a bit. Of, I'm a bit of a stranger to Forza. I've been playing a lot of the games more recently. But like, what's what separates this one from the second game? Well, mostly just um, it's still kind of the same ish, even though it's uh, and good dial down under Australia, Mike, and all that. But Mike, still, yeah. yeah. But still, the second game was somewhat all right. But they have implemented loads of really cool features and stuff comparing to the first game but the second game is somewhat all right but they have really done some really cool stuff on the third game in implementing like a character feature we can not saying customize your character but choose a particular character yeah choose so, a character some, yeah so yeah i, I your... thought that that like that is just a, a crazy like when you have all the names they they like th there's something special about hearing my own name in a game when i hear them saying okay adrian do this like like this kind voice that's just uh, talking to you basically um, there is there was not like a robot voice in this game but there is like an actual uh, Hello, Adrian. yeah it's, it's not like it's not like that they've actually recorded uh, a bunch of different names so at the start of the demo you can choose different names you can also choose uh, nicknames if none of your names fit so I guess if you live in a different country where uh, you know your your name is a bit more rare you can always call yourself Drift King or something like that or Chief but, there is Chief oh Chief Matt. Well, oh. there is cheap, but not Master Chief. No, Master Chief. Ah, there. yeah. Damn it. Yeah, but they did have Steven as well, right? 
Yeah, they did have Steven. I yeah, did showcase did have... that in my demo gameplay of it. Yeah, and they did have Adrian. I thought that was really cool. Oh, so, that's good then. Yeah. Do you turn off a lot of your settings, like your your health? Do you play with like the reverse and the um, and the track that shows you where to go? At times, when I want to use the reverse feature, but I rarely do that because I do set the um, um, difficulty to easy. Because the reason why I love the Forza Horizon, well, the Forza games in general, because of the casual settings that yeah, anyone it's very casual. Play. Yeah, yeah, that, I know. that's yeah, that's what I have it set on. And even though I enjoy most racing games, but the Forza games just you know, even though that some games like Dirt Free, for example, implemented a casual type feature where it does auto break and all that jazz you see. But, you know, it's just I the reasons why I like the Forza yeah. games. And the game is going to be huge. You're seeing the map here. This is just a small part of the of the map you're you're able to drive on here. But like you can drive all the way out in the outback in the big Australian desert. You can drive on these beaches through these caves. It's just phenomenal. And then the huge city. It's just like amazing but, indeed uh, but like i i can't believe like how much detail there is in this game because to me like it, it's even more impressive when the game is like moving at a real high speed i know it's 30 frames per second it's not 60 but the fact that you're constantly in motion it just makes it all the more impressive compared to something you you know like uncharted 4 looks gorgeous but you're staying in very small areas in a way um mm -hmm. You know, people people are also like often talking about like how Horizon Zero Dawn looks really pretty, but again, you're you're not moving very fast in that. So I think it's impressive that you can move so fast and still like keep a pretty steady frame rate. It's just phenomenal. And of course, you like drive through the you drive through the smaller trees and you you just ram down the fences, which is kind of expected in modern modern racing games today. Mm. Even though they have implemented that into Forza Horizon 2, even though I know you haven't played yeah, much of yeah, Forza yeah, Horizon that's true. 2. Yeah, I'm, I'm sorry, because I'm, I'm going straight from Forza Horizon 1 to 3 now. So it, I know. It, I have tried. I did try the demo of 2, so I know it's uh, it's pretty open, that one as well. Um, mm. But I heard I heard they're going to like have multiplayer like campaign this time around. Yeah, hopefully. It, it's just that when... Um, when well, I already heard about the rumors before it was fully announced about Forza Horizon 3. But when they announced, like, oh, we're going to feature co op and stuff, let alone the whole cross play and whatnot, but it, it's nice that you have an opportunity to, like, oh, I actually want to play this little and play with you and all that, which is actually quite good. I'm looking forward to playing it when it does come out for both of us and be able to try out the co op features, which is a new feature to Forza Horizon 3. Yeah, that's true. That you know, yeah. Again, like I didn't play the the second one, so this will be my first purchase of a of a uh, Forza game. You know, I'm gonna be all new to it. I'm I I know we're just praising the the crap out of this game. I'm really trying to find something negative to say about this, but it really is perfection perfected. I think I'm just. Uh, it's gonna be interesting to see how much more new content there is to this game. I think that's probably gonna be like the main concern to, to people like you who've already played Forza Horizon 2, like how much new content is there going to be in this. Me having jumped, going straight from 1 to 3 is obviously gonna feel like a, a lot, but I guess to you maybe not so much? Well, I know what you're trying to say, little add-ons as it is. Even though they have like the, um, at the moment on Forza Horizon, uh, no actually Forza 6 actually, and they do have like the expansion like NASCAR and all that, let alone Forza Horizon does the um, like Porsche and some other types of expansions. But I get what you're trying to say, let alone the cars as it is when they release car packs, let alone you can either buy them. Um, well, you still have to buy the DLC, but what I'm trying to say they do have some like microtransactions in most of their folders of games. So you can actually, if you want that particular car, you can do it in-game credit or use the special tokens. You can buy these sort of tokens with microtransactions as it is. Yeah, speaking of currency and stuff, I think that might be one like kind of big negative we have is that the Ultimate Edition is quite an overpriced thing. I know mm. it's I know it's like for the enthusiast. Me personally, I'm gonna go for the regular version of the game, but it it definitely it is something to be concerned about. We're seeing Microsoft is releasing an ultimate version of Gears of War um, Four as well, which is again has the same thing where you can play it a little bit early for a ridiculous amount of money, which I think is very unfortunate because I think Microsoft has a ton of really great games coming out this fall. I just don't hope they like ruin ruin things by overcharging for these ultimate editions um, but again I mean it is optional I'm totally aware of that and as long as the the, the core game is good and they're not locking out stuff you would expect 
Uh, I, th I think it's fine, actually. I know what you're trying to say, Leland. I, I totally agree, Leland. I'm not going to pick up the Ultimate Edition for Force Horizon 3 series, even though it, if you get the physical version of it, it comes with a steel book, which is not tempting, but no, nah, I'm not, definitely not going to spend like £80 for that particular game. No, yeah. Yeah, that's true. And I gone all digital, so I'm going to... Yay, I'm going to get a... No, I'm not getting a steel book, so what am I getting exactly? Well, just basically you can just get uh, early access and get a few <laughs> access content for the well, ultimate edition. That that's is. it. Yeah. Oh, god damn. Yeah, yeah. I'm I'm totally going just standard edition. Same. Yeah. I I I don't think I've ever bought like a a um deluxe edition of a game. I think except like Batman Arkham Knight, which when I bought that game, that was the only version available. So you know. Other than that, yeah, let alone I got the a steel book edition that was exclusively at Tesco's at the time. Yeah, and you know you're always going to get these later, at like lower prices, and you'll yeah, let alone content as it is, you get it on a later date regardless if you do pre-order like a special edition or something like that. Yeah, how long do you think this game is gonna keep you occupied though? What do you mean the actual game itself? Falls yeah, considering correct? considering how many other games are coming out this fall, do you think this is something that you're gonna be coming back to after having played? You know, Mafia, Battlefield, Gears of War, um, so on. I so. know, yeah, I, I might do. Um, maybe they're not saying if they release any tile updates or something like that. I might come into that. Well, I know what you mean because there's a, loads of games that it is. But it's something that might might play. Maybe you and I can play now and again, playing co op, but you know what I mean, just what, whenever now and again. Yeah, and that's one, one thing I also want to touch on. Is I really like how Microsoft is putting out a lot of multiplayer games unlike another certain console maker. So it's just, like, everything they have coming this fall and everything they got, like, next year is multiplayer except ReCore. Mm. Speaking of ReCore... Mm. Oh, are you... Oh, my God. Are you ready to jump onto this one? Yeah, I'm looking are forward to it. Are you sure? Mm-hmm. Are yeah. you sure? Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, because IGN doesn't want you to jump onto it. Oh, why is that? Well, it turns out that... Well, like every Xbox exclusive game, it's getting some pretty bad reviews. Oh. Uh, big shock, right? Mm. So yeah, I mean, l let me just bring up a picture here. Phenomenal image. Uh, mm. Basically, IGN has now, yeah, now was posting something about Sonic. Goddamn! So. <laughs> I'm using this. We're experiencing some technical issues. Oh, we're experiencing some technical issues here. We gotta get this image on. And no, that is. Hold on one second. There. And... This is our first time, by the way. <laughs> Two hours later. God damn it! Why is it black? <laughs> why is it black? Was it fully black? What the. F Oh, there it is. Seven, there we go. Seven point three. Uh, are you are you seeing it? Uh, no, because I I am not on YouTube at the moment. I'm talking to you. Yeah, go there. You. Yeah, go there. Just just fucking go there. So yeah, IGN gives the game a second, uh, a seven out of ten. And guess what? There's too much of in this game. What? Hmm. It's too long. That's oh. one thing. It's too long. And I heard some people saying it's too short. Uh, but if you get a load of this text, basically they're saying. IGN, seven, uh, 73 out of 10, perhaps its biggest issue, at least, a con on, at least on console, you know, you can't, you can't say anything bad about PC, because PC is the best thing ever, it's mm -hmm. shoddy overall performance, while mid or even lower range PC can handle the record just fine, even at max settings, the Xbox One version rarely, if ever, manages to make it to 30 FPS. Huh, but wait a minute, what about Bloodborne? What about Red Dead Redemption? What about every Bethesda game ever made? What about all of those games? They had a terrible, they had a terrible, you know, frame rate. They had a, ter a ton of terrible glitches, and they still got 10 out of 10 all across the board. And I I've been reading a lot of reviews. They're they're all go they all go like this. Oh, it's really fun. It's oh, it's got all this great stuff. But you know, performance is a little bit bad, so we're gonna dock it for that. Like, h how the fuck can you, you know, how can you do this? I just don't understand. Like. They, you know, you're. It, I mean, I know a game should be finished by the time it comes out, and you should expect the framework to work and stuff. But how the hell is it that games like Red Dead Redemption and all these other games I just mentioned, they have this awful frame rate, and they still 
because they're fun. They're fun to play. It doesn't matter if the fr like I, I know if it's unplayable. That's one thing. Here's not here's another one. Destructoid. Four out of ten. I think they said something about it being too small. So yeah, IGN thinks it's too big. Destructoid thinks it's too small. You know that's the point when you just start. You know that's when you, you don't have anything bad to say about it. When you know you have to f you have to figure out. Hmm. What can we possibly say about this game? Oh, it's too big. It's too small. There's too much water. Pokemon has too much water. Gears of War has too much A button. There's always too much of something. Mm, I know what you're trying to say. Hmm. So, well, are you still up for the game? I'll still get the game because I've played like I like you said. It. <laughs> yeah, I know it. Yeah, I was gonna say I know what you're trying to say. Let I have played them sort of games like Red Dead Redemption, Fallout, and Skyrim, Elder Scrolls. You name it, and I can understand what you mean. Sure, the performance. Yes, on and them those games, are great games. Yeah, yeah, because I know the performance. Why is this one getting docked? I, I'm not hearing anyone saying, "Oh, it's boring." They're saying, "Oh, it's really fun," but the performance is bad, so we have to dock it for that. Mm, I know what you're trying to say, even though I noticed some issues um, when I played them sort of games, but it didn't bother me. I wanted to enjoy the open world environment in these sort of games as it is. Yes, and then you come back a month later and it's it's perfect. Yeah, and, knowing patches and whatnot. Yeah, and I'm, I'm not damage controlling. I think games should be finished when they come out. I just think it's, it's there's a double standard. Why can't blood, a game like Bloodborne have a terrible frame rate? And I also heard someone saying it was too hard. Like I think the Structoid were going on about how, oh, you gotta collect too many cores. Oh, why does it take so long to to play the game? It's too hard. But a, a game like Dark Souls or Bloodborne, oh, it's really hard. And I have to like collect a bunch of souls. I have to collect way too many souls. But I enjoy doing that. It's the same thing. Mm, I know what you're trying to say. Let alone um, collecting currency to get certain things as it is in video games in general. Yeah, I. <laughs> To me, in, in a way, I don't want to make it be, become like an Xbox, PlayStation thing, because I really don't want this to be a PlayStation hate channel, but something makes me feel like these all these reviewers are just salty about the PlayStation Pro just being announced and the lack of games. Like, oh, we don't have any games for the, the fall. We gotta, you know, we gotta complain about these games. We gotta rip these games to sheds, because if we can't have any good games, they can't either. And speaking mm. of which, you know... The, the Kingdom Hearts game, which a lot of the, the PlayStation fanboys were talking about, this Kingdom Hearts, um, not Kingdom Hearts 3, but a freaking prologue, a prologue to this game basically got delayed now. A prologue, yeah. like, that's basic, Second. yeah, that's kind of like um, that Metal Gear Solid Ground Zeroes game, right, it was just a, pro mm. a, a, a short prologue, basically a demo of the game. Imagine if that got delayed and people were, oh my god, you know. And and what what else? And then there was this game Neo, which also was another PS4 exclusive. It's supposed to come out this year. It's been pushed to 2017. Gran Turismo Sports been pushed to 2017. The The Last Guardian's been pushed to December, and it's now getting pushed. Like, what the hell is going on? I'm a PS4 owner, and there is absolutely nothing on the PS4 to play this fall. I know what you're trying to say, even the PlayStation 4 owner myself, and I could understand what you mean, even though that the last game that I um, should not mention, but um, it's just the last game that I played on the PlayStation 4, even though I only just played on my PlayStation 4 today because of the recent update that came out for it. Which one? Which one did you say? Oh, the 4.0 update. I made a YouTube video about that, about the ah. new overhaul on the interface and whatnot. Oh, yes, now they, now they just copied the the sidebar thing, yeah. Mm. Yeah, they're just, they're just behind on everything, in my opinion. And here's the thing, I'm not, I'm not just going to complain about Sony just for the sake of complaining. Remember back, just go back, see my videos from like 2013 when the Xbox One was revealed. I was trashing the hell out of Microsoft. If Microsoft does something wrong, I'll, I'll say it if... If uh, Sony does something wrong, I'll say it. If Nintendo does something wrong, I'll say it. In fact, there is there is certain things we're going to complain about with Nintendo as well. But I think I want to move on to the next topic. And uh, basically, before we get our ranties in the bunch. Hmm. What did you say? Before we get our ranties in the bunch. Oh yes, we're gonna. <laughs> oh, this was a d damn good article. Our next, uh, our next, our next uh, thing is basically. Um, uh, I'm saying the word basically a lot. <laughs> hey, here's the. I, I was thinking of doing like a drinking game, 
and drink every time Steven says let alone because I noticed you said <laughs> you said a lot that a lot in your last stream. I think in this one you should just drink every time I say basically. When I do it in my vlogs, but I know what you mean. <laughs> yeah. So anyways, here is six reason to buy an Xbox One S instead of a PS4 Pro. And this is a weird kind of comparison thing because they're not really in, com in like, um, what are you saying, comp competition at all. But it's still just a damn funny thing because the Xbox One S, b even though being $100 cheaper, it still has a lot of features that the PlayStation Pro doesn't have. Now if I agree with this, I'm gonna save that till the end, but basically, basically, here comes the list. First thing is Ultra HD Blu-ray on the console, and like this is something we didn't even mention last time on our I last know. podcast. I know, I like, know, like leftovers in general, even though we was doing like our first type of impressions before How the, the media fuck blows can anyone give is? No Man's Sky 9 out of 10? Mm. Jesus Christ! I'm sorry. I'm just. I went to this page and there's a there's an ad for No Man's Sky. That piece of shit. You know, I don't understand how. Like, I know that game has like a six, uh, like a six out of ten meta score or something. How the hell does that piece of shit even have that high of a score? That's ridiculous. It's absolutely insane. I'm still waiting for a good update for it to be able to play the game. Yeah, again. then you can then you can give it a good. Oh my God. It's ridiculous. The fact that that game almost has just as good of a a score, a meta score as Quantum Break makes me absolutely sick. Cause like going back to the record thing, it's kind of the th same thing with Quantum Break. It seems like when there is a new I when there is a new IP, especially when it's on Xbox, they're gonna the media is gonna have to trash it every time. I don't know what it is is up with these these sites. Why they have to do this? I don't get it. That game was just a phenomenal game. I'm, I'm quoting it every day. I'm like, the number one killer is time, and then I go to bed. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, Ultra HD Blu-ray. Th this is kind of an odd thing. Basically, what Sony is saying is that they think that they made the PlayStation Pro for um, what would you call it, hardcore gamers, and that you know gamers don't really care about Blu-ray. Mm, I know what you're trying to say, let alone even myself, I'm a, I do like collecting Blu-rays as it is, let alone a step forward to 4K and whatnot. But I know what you're trying to say, let alone there are certain people who like to use their consoles as a media center as it is. Yeah, and again, I'm not gonna completely bash on this PlayStation 4. I think, so. like, Sony's done a great job with the PlayStation, the regular PlayStation 4. They announced it, and I was really pr impressed by this thing when they showed it off. You know, you had that deja vu. I got that feeling of deja vu. I ex that feel no, no, it's um, uh, yeah, ex yeah, you can. I get that feeling of deja vu. <laughs> yeah, Overwatch reference, and I haven't even played Overwatch. So they did such a great job with the reveal of the PS4, and then they're just completely shooting themselves in the foot with the PlayStation 4 Pro, which is kind of sad to see. How the hell does Sony, who I think owns Blu-ray, not have a 4K Blu-ray player in their own console? I know it's just like. <laughs> And I'm seeing there's a ton of 4K content, there's a ton of 4K movies. You might be thinking, oh, people are just going to stream the movies. But a lot of people don't have the bandwidth to stream movies. So, you know, what, what are you going to do then? I know what you're trying to say, let alone, um, I know, you know, there are some people out there, let alone um, people that still own an Xbox 360 and PlayStation 3 these days. Yeah. You know. Oh, yeah. My, oh my God. Jesus Christ. Get along. <laughs> it's 2016. 2006 called. They want their console back. Now, next point, basically, on the... Fucking basically. Hello. The next point on the list is Xbox One S is $100 cheaper, which is understandable. This is These are two completely different types of products. Uh, they're in a completely different league. You should technically uh, compare the Xbox One S to the PlayStation 4. Slim? But that thing is the most uh, obsolete thing ever. Like you should, there's really, uh, yeah. Like the hundred dollar cheat, the hundred dollar difference might mean a lot to some people, um, but it's not enough like of a reason to get like a a PlayStation Four Slim. Um, this also goes back to my point that I'm not, I don't a hundred percent agree with my the list here uh, on this page. Uh, but the next point they're making is that number three is that Xbox One is bundled with five games, so you're getting all the Halo games, and Halo 1, 2, 3, and 4, and 5, all the ones with Master Chief in them, that's a great value. 
Point number four is that the Xbox One will have mod support for games like Skyrim Remastered. I guess you have a lot to say on this one. Yeah, let alone I'm looking forward to game. I was thinking about games the Skyrim Remastered just for mods, even though I'm not much a PC gamer, so to say, even though trying to experience the mods on Halo, uh, not Halo, and um, Fallout 4 as it is, you say. Right. Yeah, you, you have you have you like tried them out? Um, have you tried them out on PC before? No, and it's not saying I'll get round to try mods on PC. It's just that not saying that I can be able to do it, let alone um, the Steam Workshop as it is. It's easier and complex to add mods as it is, but it it, it just uh, didn't appeal to me on PC back when I tried to do PC and modding using pr particular files, right. it, let alone Steam Workshop as it is. Yeah, to me, like mods are the most com com convoluted thing ever. I've tried a bit of mods for like Minecraft, uh, but it's still it's a it's a it's a real shame that you're not gonna have mod support. That they're saying no to mod support. Uh, there's certain games that are huge when it comes to mod support. There's Minecraft, there's GTA, and there's the Bethesda games. Those are huge mm -hmm. when it comes to to mod Especially support. Especially Skyrim on PC, because even yeah. even today people still play Skyrim just on PC just to play mods. Yeah, and you can get yourself like a little a, a little My Little Pony dragon and My Little Pony horses and stuff. Mm. It's just phenomenal. So that's a real shame. And the fifth point they're making is the backwards compatibility, which we all know is a really nice feature that, you know, the the PlayStation 4 does have, uh, you know, a streaming service, but that's n nothing close to the... Well, in P PS2 game as it is, you can download from the PlayStation Store, but it's not as good as... But you have to home. buy yeah. them again. So that's yeah, a, that, indeed. It's that, just, yeah, a, that's it's a, just a nice that. feature. People always say, like, oh, who cares about backwards compatibility? Like, who wants to play old games? But it's just a nice feature. It's just a nice thing to have. Yeah, let alone and trying out games again in a higher, not saying a higher frame rate, but, you know, it looks a bit better on the next-gen console as it is. Yeah. And the final point we're making, number six, Xbox Live is better than PSN. Roll the credits! Right, we all already knew that. Now, my uh, uh, my take on this is basically that should you get the uh, the play Xbox One S over the PlayStation 4 Pro? Not necessarily. If your if your friends are on the PlayStation, you wanna you know you would you have your games on it. You're you're in that ecosystem. Of course, you wanna go with the PlayStation Pro. But bottom line, like if you're obviously if you're an Xbox gamer, you should probably wait for the Scorpio. Isn't that kind of the, the way to go? Just Future proof yourself. Get the Pro if you're a PlayStation player. Wait for the Scorpio if you're an Xbox player. Just um, if you're the kind of person that listens to podcasts like this, you're not a casual. You're not going into the store to buy a console just to watch movies on. If that's your thing, I think the Xbox One S is a phenomenal value because it's just perfect for anyone who just wants a device to stream on and uh, play Blu-ray movies on. Because that's also another thing, when you go buy your 4K TV, it has a streaming service. It has it has sort of upscaling to 4K, it has HDR, it has all of that. One thing that a TV in itself doesn't have, that a console has, is a CD player, a DVD player, a Blu-ray player, a 4K Blu-ray player, as in the Xbox One S. So I think Sony really just, ah, they really missed just really missed the point by not including, you know, 4K Blu-ray. I was, at first I was thinking, okay, they're not gonna put 4K Blu-ray in the PlayStation 4 because they're gonna put in the Pro. Then they're not gonna put in the Pro either. Mm. I know what you're trying to say, let alone, I know there's like certain markets out there that are trying to um, future-proof stuff, let alone 4K TV as it is, even though there are still markets out there that still haven't got a 4K TV and still want to get the best experience uh, on the console that is like a smart TV type thing. How? Yeah, but how are you getting, you, if you're living in, hey, how about if you're living in the submarine, you know, like how Don Matrick was talking about how if you live in a submarine you need the Xbox 360 because the Xbox One can't connect to the internet. Now look is now look who's forcing DRM. Now the PlayStation 4 it requires online to to stream PlayStation Now to play PlayStation 3 games. You need to be connected to watch 4K Blu-ray movies or just 4K movies. Like now Sony are the ones who are forcing DRM. Now they're the ones who are kind of, you know, shoving shoving the online thing down everyone's throat. I know what you're trying to say, let alone 4K and um, patching on video games as it is, is somewhat of a new thing as it is, let alone 4 compatibility as it is. Yeah. 
all right but just in just in general you know get the get the system that your friends have and i think that's kind of the way we want to wrap it up that's that's just always what i want to go after i i play mostly on the xbox one because that's where my friends are i also have a playstation 4 i enjoy the exclusives on it and there are some pretty damn good exclusives coming to the ps4 in the future so the, the playstation pro it's a it's a good value for what you're getting i just um in my opinion like if if the system was 50 dollars more and you got a i got a 4k blu-ray player in in my opinion that would be you know honestly a better value Mm, indeed, even though, like I said beforehand, there are some people that haven't got 4K and TV as it is, but if they do, then you know you got a good buy there, let alone future proofing as it is, let alone the Scorpio as the next big thing um, for next year as it is. Yeah, so you can get yourself the. Or, I mean, you know, still though, the, the Xbox One S, it's a nice thing for those who don't care about the big like resolutions and stuff. And you're, you're going all to. Or 4K, get... all 4K yeah. game in general. And you're it, going. Uh, 4K gaming in general, sorry. Yeah, and you're, go, so you're going to get games for years to come. There's no... You're not missing out on much. I guess eventually there'll be games, these huge games that just can't run on the old hardware, that just that can only run on the new consoles. But I think you're going to get games for years to come, so I don't think there's any problem if you're if you're getting the Xbox One S or if you're getting the, the beautiful, beautiful Battlefield 1 bundle, which mm. just looks absolutely uh, stunning. I think it's just really because the Xbox One S is, uh, is stunning. I mean, it's 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 all right, I guess. Uh, they only did a color though. I, I really wish they could have done like <laughs> like just What's your so suggestion. I don't know. Not a picture though. Not a picture of a character. Um but I, you know the way they did the Gears of War one, you know, with the with the skull. Yeah, uh, it's just it's a, yeah we it's, had this conversation yeah. before. But it's it's a nice it's a nice color I guess. Um, it you know it's 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 a theme. It's a it's sometimes it's you know how Apple just kind of releases their phones in space gray, uh, you know, gold mine oh, gold. Yeah, uh, let alone hot then, pink. Yeah, let alone on iPhone seven jet black. Jet black. Yeah. You can get, yeah, piano black. Hmm sort of kind of black but yeah I mean it looks it looks alright it's another nice option for people and it's a terabyte model so I think it's cool and I like how the advertising is pointing out how you're getting the best like uh, you're getting high dynamic range support for the game which is really nice mm, yeah I heard about that announcement yeah yeah hopefully this will also be available on the Xbox One S version and the Pro version and um that's that's gonna be a cool thing. Like the thing that's nice now is that now that both like PlayStation and Xbox are Im implementing like are supporting HDR, we're probably gonna be seeing a lot of games in HDR, and that's really cool. Let alone um, the PlayStation 4 as it is got a HDR feature on their latest update now. We need like <laughs> yeah, let alone I didn't know if you need specific cables or something or TV as it is to be able to run it. Yeah, well you need. Let me see here. Yeah, you need a new cable, and I think, like Sony said, they're going to update the PlayStation, f the regular PlayStation 4, um, with HDR. Although it's not going to be native HDR, so in order to get that, you'll have to get the Pro, sadly. Yeah, and I can understand where they're coming from, Lel. And we had this discussion in the previous podcast about limitations on consoles, but to add features like that as it is. Yeah, but what can you do? Mm -hmm. It's still very nice, though. So. Our next topic, I want to, um, we've been talking a lot about Microsoft and Sony, the rivalry between those. Remember back in the day when, so when, uh, what were they, called? yeah, Nintendo and Sega were big, uh, <laughs> were big enemies. Mm, I know that feeling. Well, and I used to be, play I used to play on the Super Nintendo back in the days. I did play a bit of Sega Mega Drive and whatnot, but I always, at heart, used to be a Nintendo person. Yeah, basically, I'm saying basically again. Take a shot, everybody. Hello. So somebody make this really cool-looking Sonic game, this like 3D Sonic game. You're seeing it right now. Oh, there's mm -hmm. some screen tearing there. Goddamn, you're seeing it. I don't see it. Sorry. Oh, but it's like. Um, they kind of sort of managed to make this fan Sonic game where 
uh, you're in this like open world environment, and you. Um, the idea of the game was to give a game, make a game where you are not given speed. You're kind of just. Um, you kind of have have to earn speed in a way. So you go down like a a hill, and you'll earn speed, and you find ways to um, to get through the levels. Mm. Uh, it, it looks very interesting. You can look it up. And and but basic yeah the thing is though that on Twitter, um, so the official Sonic the Hedgehog page uh, posted a little a little tweet here which I'm gonna bring it up, so everybody can have a look at it. Um, uh, we are so spurious in some technical issues. Uh, we're gonna have to find a better way to do this, cause I can't mm -hmm. find these pictures. Great. There it is. There we go. And so here's Sonic the Hedgehog on Twitter saying, Be right back, DMCA time. Just kidding. Keep making great stuff, Sonic fans. <laughs> wow. Oh, he, he took it lightly, though. This guy mm. is replying the Super Sonic 68, which I guess is the guy who made this, um, this game, saying, Oh, I don't... I don't know what to say, thank you. I'm so happy that you've seen this. I've only just now seen this comment. My heart is racing faster than the pitter-patter of Sonic's feet. Alright. Well, I'm, I'm, happy f I'm happy for him, though. They're not taking it down. I know what you're trying to say, because there have been stuff in the past where people tried to remake their... Uh, their remake games, but their own, like, you know, without... Um, copyright claims and all that, yeah, I can understand what you mean. I know there's like a Sonic and 2 remake and some other games like Final Fantasy, some other types of games, like, and I heard most um, developed... Oh, are, are people doing a Final Fantasy fan remake? I, I, saw, I heard, uh, I saw, it was like the same, it's not saying it's a Final Fantasy remake, but it's like a, um, a fan-made um, one where it's just basically a, a beam-up more than a... Um, uh, a turn-based RPG and whatnot. I feel very bad for anyone who tried to make a Final Fantasy VII remake because now they're doing it themselves. Yeah, uh, I, like I said beforehand, there are, uh, there are still developers out there that are just convincing um, people if they can't remake it, they can remake it themselves and all that, which is totally understandable. It, get, it makes the fans happy, I guess, to play a better version of a particular games. Yeah. So anyways, the, the funny thing about the, the tweet is that this was kind of a jab at Nintendo because Nintendo has been t <laughs> they've been taking down a lot of stuff they were taking down the Super Mario 64 uh, remake thing that I was yeah, making I video remember, about I, a few years ago I remember ago. that yeah. yeah I remember you saying about that in yeah. general they took down the um, what was it called No Mario Sky which is like a No Man's Sky parody yeah, I, heard I didn't about really look that. into that it sounds no sounds I didn't really I heard videos. about it but I didn't look, look into that yeah but I mean I'm not gonna sit here and damage control Nintendo, but Nintendo has the right to to like to keep their copyrights. It is their right to you know yeah, uh, keep, keep it protected. Feeling. So I I totally understand. Uh, I just think Nintendo obviously is a little out, out of touch. I think maybe they should. Uh, it's it's hard to tell because it doesn't like it doesn't make me want to stop playing Nintendo games because I like Nintendo it's kind of a yeah same. it's uh, someone if, if it's someone that you've grown up with like for years and then suddenly he commits oh, totally a murder understand. if someone you've grown up with and know and then they commit a murder you're still gonna like them you know oh sure my dad works in Nintendo <laughs> yeah but obviously if you're if you're Microsoft if you came into the gaming industry only two gens ago you're obviously not gonna have as many like apologists and stuff so it makes sense you know you kind of you earn trust through through time, mm. but again, I'm not I'm not condemning what Nintendo does. I'm not condoning what they do. Um, it just it just is what it is, really. I know what you're trying to say, little, and I enjoy Nintendo as it is. It's just um, all the circumstances as it is. Even though I can't share most things on the good old YouTubes and whatnot, which is totally understandable yeah. why. But, but I, I, yeah. I I still love for Nintendo as it is, yeah. even though I try my very best to play certain games as it is, it's just one thing led to another, let alone other consoles as it is, taking its place and whatnot, let alone, you know, back in my childhood, I love playing Nintendo. Yeah, it's just, it's hard to like them when they keep doing this and when they keep coming out with, 
you know, Metroid Prime Federation Force and Super Mario 3D World, which I'm not gonna beat that horse, that dead horse. Mm-hmm. But it's it's just really hard. It's ho- dead. It's already dead. Yeah, it's it's just. But, anyways, moving on, like, or going back to this uh, Sonic game, uh, it looks interesting. But I never really had a problem with the way that the Sonic games are now. Um, but they are definitely a bit linear, and I understand like where. Uh, where this demo is heading, they want to try and make something that's a little more uh, open-ended, and you can like run along walls, and it it looks actually it, it looks pretty good, but it definitely looks a bit rough. But for as a fan game, it looks absolutely phenomenal. Just l- thinking of it as a the fact that it's a fan, uh, as a fan game, yeah. I'm very e- impressed e- by it. Yeah, even though, like I said, there are people out there that really want remakes or. Um, better games of certain games, let alone, like I said before, and as it is, you know, people like that. But the, you know, there are certain limitations, let alone copyright claims, as it is. And um, even though it's a nice, interesting game, when I saw some gameplay of a certain YouTuber channel, but um, I, when I saw it, it's like, yeah, it's nice that they're implementing like uh, not using Sonic Speed, but trying to co- make your own speed to make that speed uh, realistic. That is. Oh, oh, you have you have seen the video. No, no, no! I saw, uh, yeah, I saw a, a YouTube channel that um, um, did some gameplay when I was doing some research about it. Hmm, I, I wonder if it's free. I'd like to try it out. I it think does... it is free. He oh. did statement that on the video, but yeah, I think it is free. Okay. It does look a bit demanding, though. Like the 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 locations look pretty big, so I guess you'll have pretty beefy. You'll need a pretty mm. beefy PC, and you know, like indie games tend to be very poorly optimized. Yeah, I can uh, understand by an indie development standpoint. Yeah. Oh, look at him go! Damn, I like that mock speed. You can like, when you reach a certain amount of speed, you get this, you get to this point where you just latch on to any surface yeah, you're on. You can go in the mean, loops and yeah. stuff. I'm just looking at the footage right now. It just, <laughs> it actually looks pretty fun. So yeah, I'm, yeah, yeah, good on them for making this. Good on S- Sega for, you know, not taking this down. Mm, indeed. Nintendo, we're watching you. Anyways. Speaking of games that people don't want revived, I guess that was a decent segue. Um, nice transition. Nice transition to to this uh, game that's being revived, and it's coming out in a nice collection called the Ezio Collection: Assassin's Ooh. Creed. Ooh, what is this? They are, you know, coming out with a nice collection that could have just been backwards compatible. But oh, shh, 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 shh. let's not say because the PS4 isn't backwards compatible. So yeah, yeah, we're coming up with this collection of three games, and which which ones are they? Um, Assassin's Creed Two, Assassin's Creed Revelations, and I think what is it? No, hold on. Assassin's Creed Two, Assassin's Creed Rele- Oh yeah, and Assassin's Creed Brotherhood. Those are the, uh, the, right. Yeah, those are the Ezio get uh, and titles. I always thought those were like inferior. Like I, I hadn't played them, but I just kind of always thought that they were the inferior ones because they weren't numbered. I started at three actually, so I, mm-hmm. I played three and then I played four and I, I played pretty much all of them since then. I played Syndicate. Um, I like them, but I heard like a lot of people say the second one is certainly the best one. Yeah, I totally agreed. Even though that I played much of the second one from my um, friend's copy, even though I got a copy through Games of Gold, which is nice, learning backwards compatibility as it is. Even though that I played a certain amount of Assassin's Creed games, but I think um, number four is my favorite. Um, even though, even oh, though I, yeah. I, w- I would prefer number two, so to say, but for some reason I prefer number four. One thing that just um, one thing that just annoyed me a little bit about that game was. The, the pirate ship thing where you had to constantly upgrade your ship and for some reason it was really hard to find iron in that game like I was looking everywhere I needed iron to upgrade my ship and I just couldn't find it anywhere mm, was okay just, then God damn, I just I, iron. I just I just like the concept of pirates let alone the um, yeah it was yeah. other than that it was great I mean I really wanted to finish that game but I uh, I never actually did I got very far but I just god damn it was just that grinding you know what I think of grinding Mm, let alone, um, I got um, free with Games of Gold on the Xbox One. I think I did on the Xbox 360, I can't remember. But right. I did get one free with Games of Gold, let alone I did get a physical copy. It's nice to own them both regardless. Right. 
So the the thing that just shocks me a little bit is they haven't really gone in and upgraded the graphics, which makes sense. I mean, it's a, it's a trilogy. They put in three games in here. They could have gone in and taken one game and really made a proper remake, which honestly I would have preferred that. Like, look at how Gears of War Ultimate they take they took one the first one and just completely remade that game and just made it look absolutely gorgeous. Would you rather have just the first one or just the second one be remade, or are you okay with a trilogy like this? I know what you're trying to say, even though that, like like we said, that the second one is a bit better, but um, let alone Ezio Auditore as it is, but, um, you know, I, I, they should really just do the second one as it is, since the second one is better. I don't mind um, Brotherhood and Revelations, but you might as well just do the second one, really. Yeah, whoever go like, I would want the graphics to just be a little better when I'm buying a collection, when I have to buy the game again. Like, whoever goes to the store and looks at a game and just says, ooh, those are some nice pixels. Oh, that was a nice resolution. Like, you you notice how when you look at this game, you say, "Oh, it's in 1080p. It's gonna be gorgeous in 4K on the Pro and 4K mm. 60 on the Scorpio." But it's still that blocky kind of graphics. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know what you're trying to say. Like, upscaling is the thing as it is. But I know what you're trying to say. Yeah, it's like play. It's pl like playing Mario 64 in in 4k you know you're not really getting a whole lot of more detail you don't need to it looks cleaner sure but it's you know you you don't need that detail mm, let alone i did hear speaking about mario's witch um i heard well it's a bit of a rumor but i didn't know when it was going to be confirmed and whatnot but i heard that at um and super mario 64 ds is coming to the wii u but i didn't know if it, they're going to completely remake oh. it let alone oh it's already out it is. It's already out. Yes. It is. Oh, oh, you and I didn't mean virtual console as it is. I heard a rumor or some kind. No, but it, oh, uh, wait, a remake. But you know, Super Mario sixty four DS is already a remake. So are they doing a remake of a remake? Oh uh, no, I just heard from something. I, I might be just something that I just looked up on. But forget what I said though. No, but I, I think it's already out actually because I've seen some reviews of it. I think it. Yeah, it was. It was nothing. It was just the. Super Mario 64 DS was re-released for the virtual console. For yeah, the virtual I, console. yeah, yeah. I just I read up something and I might have been wrong, or it might have been some kind of um, fake thing, let alone known um, unofficial Nintendo tweets as it is. Yeah, that's true. But hey, I mean, it's it's good on them, you know, getting some of these games re-released. Uh, I just hope that like <laughs> with the next generation of the NX that they can implement some way of you being able to not have to buy your games again all the time. Mm, I know that feeling, let alone I don't mind buying certain games again, even though I don't mind buying ports of particular games, even though if there's like, say, for example, this is an example, like Borderlands, the Hanson Jack collection is mainly because I haven't played the pre-sequel and I enjoy playing the second one it, in its better frame rate than the second one right. uh, on the next-gen consoles, but I mainly bought that because I haven't bought the other um, game as it is. Yeah, but that's this is something that we're not going to have to deal with like moving forward with like the Pro and the Scorpio where everything's just going to scale up, and that's a nice thing. Hopefully Nintendo will, will follow suit. I think that mm. would, yeah. I, I'm certain they they will, but I think the the pr problem is Nintendo always wants to be gimmicky. They also, hey, here's a new input method for you. Now you're gonna uh, learn to use this gamepad. <laughs> or, I don't mind the gamepad as it is, even though it's a bit clunk. Well, not clunky. I mean, chunky as it is, but um, I don't mind it. Even though it's ni a nice feature though for off-play TV, which I can understand why the marketing standpoint is it is. But um, yeah, I can understand that. But um, Man, I don't mind it as it is, like, I didn't know what they're going to implement on the NX as it is. Yeah. Speaking of Nintendo though, I mean, I, I heard there's going to be some NX uh, announcement this month. Mm. I think? Have you heard anything oh. about that? No, uh, I haven't heard, of, like, like, not, like I said, about that Super Mario and um, 64 remake as it is, like, whatever you hear, like, what I hear, but right. go on. Oh no, no! I, that that's just really all I heard. I just heard it was they're doing something, all right, something fair this then. month. Okay, fair enough then. Well, anyways, uh, we should probably start wrapping things up. We're done. We're through the, um, we're through our topics, okay, and we're then. we're at an hour now. So I think it's a really nice time to wrap things up. I would just like to do some plugs at first, 
um, like as always, could you tell? Could you tell us like? Um, could it, you just tell us a bit about your channel and what you what videos you're going to be doing this week? Um, what I, well, I know I mentioned about this on the previous podcast, but I'll mention it again anyways. Yeah, for but new then, viewers. Yeah, and Steve T7, oh, I do like uh, vi YouTube videos, and I do like mixtures of different YouTube videos as it is, and I do just enjoy making them and doing vlogs and gameplays, and I've been doing this and that this week, let alone doing whatever that I can, uh, but I mentioned about it in my vlogs and anyways, or what videos I do um, throughout the week and next week as it is, um, but I, I can't think on the top of my head on videos I did and this week and next week as it is. But, on the spot, really mentioned about that, but no, yeah, no, it's it's okay. I mean, he does. Steven, he does vlogs. That's something you can always count on. He's always gonna do a vlog every Friday. I think I'm. Um, I really enjoy those. I always look forward to watching those. I know. I enjoy. I enjoy making, make, discussing about life and let alone video games. As it is. It's a mixture of anything, and it's a vlog, anyways. It's just talking about stuff in front of a camera. Yes, it's yes. pretty common. Yeah, and me personally, I am you know agent passion. Uh, at the moment, I do, yeah, I do this podcast, which we're gonna. It's probably gonna be a weekly thing now. This is our first time doing it live. Hopefully, yeah, yeah live as it is. This is our first time doing it live. Technical issues. I uh, you, you can see my my profile picture there is black and white. I haven't finished it yet. Basically, yeah, it's supposed to be a, a picture of me in a kind of cartoony version, um, holding a sword and some stuff. It'll it'll be cool. And I recently posted a a video about Halo. On um, the new like PC version of Halo and the updates for it and what I think about that about what I think of uh, Halo kind of he sort of heading to PC uh, even though really it's not I don't think Halo 5 is gonna head to PC the the full game I think we're gonna see that with Halo 6 and that's gonna be a nice thing being able to play Xbox and PC players being able to play with one another so I, I made yeah. a I made a video about that uh, what I thought of it and so there is that Anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed this podcast. I hope you watched it all the way till the end. If you did, you can write Bazinga in the <laughs> in the comments section below. And uh, we'll catch you later. All right, then. See ya. See, See you later. next week. If bye. So, yeah. Bye. Do, do, do. Do, do.